I will fire up my keynote uh, in a minute, but uh, first let's show what uh, the library can do that I will present here. So I will present a library for um, multi-precision arithmetic uh, for use at runtime as well as at compile time. And here is the compile time example. Let's uh, make the font a bit bigger. But here are, but is this big enough, by the way? Yeah, good. So there are a couple of static asserts. And to prove you that this works, I can um, change the, the value of that zero in a different number. For example, one. And then the static assert failed. So uh, this is uh, running in, in Vim with Clang, uh, who compiles on the fly. Um, and and uh, that's why uh, this, this check now can be done. Uh, so yeah, I can do their addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, etc. OK, let's uh, go now to my presentation. And before I uh, continue, oh, that's not it. So where did we go? Here. Yeah. Before I uh, continue talking about the library, uh, let me quickly introduce the fields that I'm working in. Um, and for that, I want to ask you um, who had to fly in to the US in order to attend this, uh, this conference? Okay, uh, a few people, and then you must have experienced the fact that um, you have to provide some personal details to the United States government. And in particular, uh, you, you provide this uh, pers personal details to your airliner, and then the airliner sends a list of uh, passengers uh, together with their private details, uh, or sort of the details like passport uh, data to the United States government, and they will compute the set intersection between a list of potential terrorists and a list of passengers. And that they want to do this is, I can understand that, uh, also given the, the facts uh, or events like 9-11, etc. but let's not go into that. But I do understand that they want to do that. But on the other hand, well, I'm not uh, a terrorist myself. So why should my data go there and, and probably stay there? Well, anyway, I'm, I'm not the guy they are looking for. So what, what I would prefer, actually, is that let's imagine that there is some, some trusted party to which my airliner sends my details, my personal details, and also the Department of Homeland Security sends the list of potential terrorists. And then this intersection is computed in that trusted party. And if that intersection is empty, then all the information will just be forgotten. And that would be, from a privacy perspective, would be much better. And actually, um, well, I, I do research in a field called multi-party computation, which is a subfield of cryptography. And with multi-party computation, um, you can create a, a protocol so that uh, the airliner and the Department of Homeland Security can together run this interactive protocol and by that emulate this trusted party. So that trusted party is not a tang tangible object, it's, it's not a physical object, not some consulting firm or what have you. No, it's, it is just an imaginary thing that was created by running this protocol. And that protocol then could guarantee that uh, the Department of Homeland Security does not see the input from the airliner and the airliner does not see the input of the Department of Homeland Security, but only if there is a match, the, the United States government would get the relevant uh, items in that intersection. Yeah, so that is uh, multi-party computation with which the parties can emulate that trusted party. Now, if you want to implement multi-party computation, uh, then also you have to deal with big integer arithmetic. So, and of course, if you use elliptic curve cryptography, there's also um, multi-precision arithmetic uh, involved. And because uh, I want to focus on those applications, I restrict the bit size of the operands with which I work to lengths in the order of a few hundred bits. So I say here 200 bits can be 300 bits, but not 10,000 bits. That's not the, the scope of the library that I will uh, talk about. 
Yeah, so what is uh, big integer arithmetic? Most of you will know that. It's just uh, arithmetic with numbers that do not fit in a single register. And that register width is dependent on the machine, but let's say it's 64 bit. And what do I want to do with the library? I want to be able to do addition, multiplication, addition modulo Q. Yeah, so I, I perform the addition, and after that I, I reduce uh, modulo uh, Q, where Q is some big number. Q could be actually a prime, then we have a finite field structure, which, is, which has some nice mathematical properties. Um, well, and there are some, some, other, um, some other features in the library, but I cannot cover everything here in the, in the talk. Now, you, would, uh, you could raise the question like, uh, is this yet another uh, big integer library? Because there are dozens of them already. And in, yeah, in, in some sense, yes, it's yet another library. But on the other hand, um, because I focus on this particular um, bit, bit width regime of these 200 bits, uh, roughly, uh, we can optimize for, for that regime. Mm. So one, uh, one thing is that we could use a uh, stud array all over the place, because especially if we are in this modulo Q arithmetic, then we have a clear upper bound on the length of the operands. So then we can work with fixed size um, containers. Also header only, so we can do uh, some optimizations and the, the compiler can always look into our, to our code. Uh, and also I can make an assumption that I actually know this Q, this, this modulus, uh, that I know that at compile time. And then I can do compile time optimizations. For example, to do the, the modular reduction uh, faster. And in order to do this, we need to perform big integer uh, computations during compile time. And uh, one thing where you might need this is in this uh, case, if you type in Godbolt, um, a modulo operation uh, with a modulus that the compiler knows, then it will rewrite it uh, to a multiplication and a bit shift. And I want to do that, but then with big integers. That was actually the main motivation uh, for, the, for the library. Okay, um, then I want some features. It should have a natural um, C++ API, and of course that's an objective uh, thing, but, but let me give some examples uh, in the coming slides. Also want good performance at runtime, um, hopefully uh, correctness, and constant timeness. And the latter is a, a property that is important for cryptography that I will uh, come back to and explain what it means. But first, let's focus on this uh, natural API uh, for example, I want to be able to, to write the following thing. Uh, I want to parse uh, uh, an integer literal uh, at compile time. And, um, well, now there's auto x, so what, what could auto be? Well, what would be a reasonable type for, for x? Maybe somebody has a, has a suggestion. Yeah, uh, array um, could, uh, could be a good choice. I actually have chosen for integer sequence because if you use an integer sequence, then it's uh, easy to pass that thing around. You, you, you can pass it into two functions and then still the compiler will uh, know that it knows all the, all the limps in, in this uh, array. And a, and a limp is just one chunk of 64 bits out of which the number is, is composed. So uh, by using integer sequence, although Sometimes, by, to manipulate inter integer sequences, it, it will be, become a bit more ugly. The code, if you look in, in, the, in, the, in the library, uh, it has this advantage that things stay const expert, if you will, wish to call it like that. So another thing that I want to do if I um, work in a ring, so if I um, keep in the back of my head this modulus and all the operations that I do, I want to reduce with the modulus after that. Um, then I want that this modulus is not at runtime taking memory space in the type. So, uh, uh, sorry, in, in the object. So I want to store it in the type rather than in the object. Um, and I can actually write this. 
So here I, I give uh, this compile time integer literal. Um, this zq is a helper function that creates an object out of it uh, of a type zq element, where then the, the modulus is uh, first, com uh, com uh, first converted to a base 2 to the 64 representation from this uh, base 10 uh, representation that is input by the user. And then I take a decal type, so I actually just extract the type and uh, call that gf, and then later I can create objects from this gf type and uh, use, say, the overload of the operators, which then will automatically uh, apply the, the modular reduction with that uh, modulus that has been baked into the, to the type. So one recurring pattern that I... Uh, I use a couple of times uh, in my code, or that emerges from my code, is the following. Um, because I work with these standard integer sequences, I um, want to compute some integer sequence, and a priori, I do not know what the real length of the integer sequence will be. So I have an upper bound of the length, but I, I don't really know what the useful length will be, in the sense that which of the... Um, the integers in that integer sequence will actually be non-zero. So there, here there are trailing, trailing zeros. So what I basically want to do is, first I create that, uh, that vector with, with some trailing zeros, and then I will uh, cut off this, uh, these trailing zeros. And where I said vector, I, I mean, of course, integer sequence. So this, uh, this uh, sounds easy, and in some sense it is also easy, but it, it becomes a bit lengthy if you uh, write that in, in, in current uh, C++. Uh, so I hope uh, the, the font size is, uh, is good enough for the back. Uh, anyway, the, there's some computation that you do. The actual computation, which is called there, um, returns the, this uh, non-type representation in the sense that there are trailing zeros. And then I have this type length function, which computes actually the the type length, uh, the length uh, of the non-zero part, and then I uh, cut it off by invoking this take first uh, function. But okay, as long as you hide this under the carpet and make it uh, invisible for the user, then uh, then fine. Uh, but it's just that I yeah, want to share this and, and want to ask, is there a simpler way uh, how we can do these things? But also I talked to Marshall Klo uh, during this conference and he said that uh, a lot more will, will be possible with uh, stud array in C20. So maybe uh, all this hassle uh, can, can go away then for C20. Um, anyway, another topic uh, the topic of passing operands into a function. And let's first take a look at how an existing library for multi precision arithmetic solves this. Um, this is uh, GMP, this is GNU's uh, multi precision library. An MPN add is the function for addition of operands that have the same length. So if you look at the prototype, it looks as follows. Um, what we see there in the prototype is this MP pointer for the, the result, a pointer to the result, um, and then um, pointers to the, the, the operands that I want to add, this U and V, and um, a length, uh, an integer that uh, or unsigned integer that uh, captures the length. And in, in some sense, you could say that the compiler is a bit blind here because it, it doesn't understand that that n tells something about uh, the memory uh, from this u and, and, and from this v. Uh, so um, also the, the n is not a uh, compile time value, so it might have difficulty uh, with unrolling the, the, the loop there, which you see depends on, uh, on n. And also, um, the compiler here cannot see whether the result aliases with uh, the, the operands. So that, uh, yeah, a, a friend of mine who knows more of compilers uh, uh, told me that uh, that that can kill some uh, optimizations. I see some compiler person there nodding. So that uh, that's good. Um, so what I uh, do in my library is the following. Um, I pass uh, std array just by value into the function and, and return um, by value also. 
So now it is clear that the compiler knows that this n belongs to, to the input uh, lengths, and it's also a compile time value, so it, it can easily unroll this loop. And here I have put uh, return by value and, and pass by value in quotes, because actually, depending on, on the length, uh, depending on this n, the compiler might rewrite this uh, into a pass by reference or, or pass by pointer. Um, but anyway, then it's the compiler who decides that because it's, it understands what's going on. And uh, yeah, that, that's what I want. I want to leave that flexibility up to, uh, up to the compiler because the compiler knows better what, uh, what should be done there. Okay, if I uh, uh, look at the performance at runtime of my library, uh, uh, not exhaustively, but let's just pick one, one function, the multiplication function. And the multiplication function is just uh, Knut's uh, schoolbook uh, multiplication. Um, then, yeah, the, the, the performance is, uh, is uh, good uh, compared to these other libraries, which is GMP, NTL from uh, Victor Shoup, a number theory, ter number theory library. And this green bars is GMP raw, which is, um, was actually pointed out to me by Frederick Johansson, who is also a computational number theorist, you know, or, or who does work in that uh, field. And uh, he pointed me to this GMP null base case function, which is not part of the public interface of GMP, um, but is kind of the core multiplication routine that does not all the runtime checks to, to see well, in what regime the in inputs are, so what function should be called, etc. But still, uh, for the, the target range of, uh, of the operand length, um, we are yeah, close or even a bit faster uh, than, uh, than that green uh, function. Uh, but if you go uh, and look on the right of, of the, the, uh, the graph, so five limbs and, uh, and further, uh, then we start losing from the, the competitors. And uh, I guess that is because then you, you should switch to a different algorithm, for example, Karatsuba multiplication or Toom multiplication. Um, and I'm not going to uh, explain that, but that's just my guess. It could also, uh, yeah, the, the source could be somewhere else that we are slower there, but I didn't look into that. Okay, another benchmark is modular exponentiation. And here I benchmark against uh, NTL, this uh, library from Victor Shoup, and libff, uh, which is a library from uh, some people at MIT uh, who are related uh, to the Zcash or Zero Cash uh, project. Um, and here what I found is just by playing with uh, inlining of the multi multiplication routine, which is called as a subroutine of this modular exponentiation, uh, then I, I either win or lose from this libff. So by, by forcing inlining, I, I can significantly impact uh, the performance there. Uh, okay, um, that uh, concludes the part about uh, performance. Um, let's uh, talk about correctness of code. So uh, there are quite some tools uh, around there uh, uh, today uh, which, which let you uh, prove some uh, properties about your code. Uh, and if you can, uh, can manage to get an equivalence proof uh, of your code, your compiled code against a high level uh, specification, then that is of course uh, better than uh, most unit tests. Uh, it, it would give you the optimal uh, unit test. And um, uh, what I'm uh, using, or what I've used for, for example, verifying the correctness of addition, is a tool called uh, SAW, Software Analysis Workbench from Galois. And there you uh, give the, the specification of the correct behavior in a, in a high-level uh, programming language, sort of Haskell-like functional uh, language, which is on the left. And on the right is my C++ function, which is compiled uh, by Clang to LLVM bitcode. And this tool takes the LLVM bitcode and, uh, and interprets that. So if we look at uh, the, the, the specification of addition, uh, it's basically a few lines. Um, what what, uh, what uh, needs to be done here is uh, I need to tell uh, 
the, the tool to interpret these separate limbs as a number, uh, then add those, uh, this number to the other operand, and uh, this crypto language that I use here has uh, multi-precision arithmetic built in, so that's nice. And then the result I should tear apart again or, or chop up in, in different uh, limbs. So these uh, big int to num and num to big int functions, I wrote them myself, but they are basically just calling split and, and join from the, uh, from the language. So this is the, the entire spec. And then uh, you need to tell to the tool, uh, this SAW, what it should do with the spec and the compiled code. So there's uh, some script that I won't go into detail. I won't go through it. But uh, anyway, it, it does what you expect, right? You have to tell the file name of, of the LLVM bitcode and, and how to call your file, or, uh, sorry, how to call your function and, and what is the type of the input, et cetera. And at some point you want to ask it to, to perform this equivalence proof. Okay, um, did I have success? Yes, I, I, uh, I had success with the addition function. Um, it would prove equivalence for, uh, or in a couple of seconds. Um, but for multiplication, the story is different. Uh, this approach does not work uh, well for multiplication and other techniques are, are needed. And uh, for other functionalities in the library, I well, didn't yet uh, uh, write these scripts, etc. So I didn't try that yet. Um, but uh, the take home message is that, of course, the, the tool cannot do everything, but uh, still it is very easy to set up. So I was actually surprised by the practicality of the yeah, current, uh, current tool. So I uh, encourage you to, to try it, uh, try, try and play with these tools. Uh, then, um, Speaking about constant time, constant time is uh, an important uh, property which is uh, very important for uh, security of the code. And here, let, let's just read it. The constant time property um, means that your code does not leak any information about values designated as secrets, uh, for example, the secret key, uh, via timing side channels. Uh, so in other words, the attacker should not be able to infer knowledge on, on secret parts of your program by just uh, using a stopwatch or a more advanced stopwatch. Uh, and uh, there are several don'ts that you should not do in the code, and this is not an exhaustive list, but it captures the, the main things that, that you shouldn't do. You shouldn't branch on, on the secret value because the attacker, you, you have to assume that it can also uh, see the, or, parts about the branching uh, structure of your program, so, so when the CPU executes it. And you shouldn't uh, index memory uh, with a secret value. Also there the, the attacker can observe where the, the CPU is, is uh, loading memory, etc. Um, okay, so you can try to write code uh, using these guidelines, but then how can you know uh, whether you did a good job? And for that, there are also now tools, uh, and mature tools, and one of them is uh, CTVarif, um, which was uh, described in a paper from 2016. And again, this, this uh, tool works on the level of LLVM bitcode. So there's an important caveat here that uh, for, uh, for a real um, application, you of course want to check the constant timeness of the machine code and not of the LLVM bitcode because then you leave out a step uh, that translates the, the assembly to the actual target dependent uh, assembly. But okay, the, this is just a stepping stone in that sense. Um, it uses uh, Boogie as a backend, which is a, a prover and also actually a, a language for verification purposes by, by Microsoft Research. And uh, although it's targeting uh, C, I actually, uh, with some uh, small tweaks, got, got it to work for C++, and uh, then I could uh, yeah, prove constant timeless property of some of the functions uh, in my library. And here it's just the output of a, a Docker container, uh, but okay, you can delete that. Um, okay, there's still a bit of time left, so I, I have some, uh, some slides uh, that I uh, have left uh, or if I still have time. 
Um, this modular operation that I talked briefly about, uh, that the compiler rewrites a mod modular operation into uh, multiplication and bit shifts, um, is actually, um, or works as follows. So uh, there's, um, n is the, an integer multiple of the machine word size, mm. and D, uh, the divisor, so if you want to divide by D, then it's smaller than, than a power of uh, uh, power of two, two to, two to the N. Um, then what you want to do is you want to find the magic value M, uh, so that if you multiply uh, N by M, so, so on the left you see I want to, to divide N by D, but instead you first multiply um, n by m, such that you can divide by a power of two. That's that's basically the trick, and and the pre-computation is then to compute this uh, this m. And uh, with a small step, you can then also find the remainder. Um, and this is a, a constant time uh, operation. Um, in contrast to, for example, if you do Barrett reduction. Because in, in Barrett reduction, which is another technique for fast uh, modulo reduction with a pre-computation, then you have a optional or data-dependent subtraction at the end, uh, which you don't have here. So this is uh, this is nice uh, for constant timeness. And this was described by uh, Granlund, the author of uh, GMP and uh, Montgomery in '94. Okay, another uh, topic is. Um, um, Composition uh, with other libraries, for example, Eigen. Um, well, because I basically use a std array, you don't have to uh, worry about uh, lifetimes of memory objects or what have you, because everything is uh, on the stack or maybe even in registers. Um, okay, let's yeah, let's go to the key takeaways. I've uh, told you about uh, CT Bignum, a library which is still a, a work in progress. Uh, for big integer computation at runtime and at compile time. Um, I make uh, heavily use of uh, integer sequence, um, which has the nice property that the context pureness, uh, that the compiler knows all the values at compile time is preserved, but it can be a bit cumbersome to, to, to handle. Uh, some of the functions have been formally verified and uh, the current uh, tools that are out there, um, yeah, I, I was positively, uh, I was impressed by them, and uh, and it took me very little time to get them up and running and uh, and get uh, useful results. Okay, thank you, and uh, maybe there are questions. Uh, could you please uh, use the microphone? Or uh, so, in the beginning of the uh, of the talk, you said that you were passing the uh, std arrays to the function by value because that way the compiler has all the information. But I would expect that even if you pass it by reference, the compiler still has all the information and can perform the optimization, right? Um, yeah, I'm a bit on icy grounds because I'm not a compiler person. But I think that if you pass by reference, it prevents uh, register optimization, that it puts everything in the CPU register. And now I have to look in the room whether that's correct statement. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, well, as I said, I'm on icy grounds there. So uh, talk to somebody uh, who has compiler knowledge. <laughs> Do you find that your library is primarily used in a throughput sensitive context where you have many things on which you wish to do these arithmetic operations or in a latency sensitive context where you want the result really quickly? Mm, good question. Uh, yeah, I think it gives you both good, uh, good throughput. And and, uh, and low latency. Yeah. 
but I, I guess it's uh, tr throughput that uh, that is important. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so you are moving uh, a lot of optimizations into compile time for computation. Uh, do you feel that uh, JIT compilation may uh, help even more, like uh, loading secret uh, to uh, the, uh, before compiling, uh, compiling it with the secret inside, and then uh, doing operations? Um, well, I guess it's not a good idea to uh, uh, to expose a secret to all these compile time tricks. Uh, so here, for example, I see that Q as a as a thing that, that can be known, that is publicly known, and, and then you give it to the compiler to optimize. Um, but I, I think if you start giving secret data to the compiler, yeah, you don't really know wh where it will plant it, so that maybe it will be visible somewhere in the, in the binary file then, or... Uh, mm. All right. Uh, might, might be possible, but I haven't uh, thought of a way wha how that could be... Uh, how that could work well, that you kind of have to guarantee that nothing leaks in a, in a, in a bad way. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs>